Good afternoon. My name is Richard Weiss. I'm a senior fellow and director of the Center for Political and Military Analysis here at the Hudson Institute. I'm here today, January 4, 2010, to talk about the war in Afghanistan. Many people believe this will be the year of decision for Afghanistan. According to NATO intelligence, uh, the Taliban insurgency has rebounded significantly and it looks like there, uh, that uh, this will be the one year when there will be a large number of NATO troops in the country that can carry out an effective counterinsurgency strategy. The problem we're running into is that the calendars for the United States, NATO, Europe, and Afghanistan itself are a bit out of sync. Let me explain. The United States uh, has committed under President Obama to increase its troop strength into Afghanistan uh, and, uh, significantly, much larger than any time in history uh, of the conflict since 2001. Uh, the President is, is going to send in another 30,000 combat troops this year on top of the additional equipment from last year. By the end of this year, we should have approximately 100,000 U.S. combat troops in Afghanistan. Uh, that said, the President, as the administration, in order to meet con uh, domestic concerns about the duration of the conflict, has indicated they would like to start reducing troops the following year, starting about July 2011. Now, NATO European governments have offered to increase their troop strength at well, as well. They formally pledged 7,000 troops, but on closer examination, if you look at the figures, some of those uh, troops are actually troops that are already there that have been planned to be withdrawn but will actually stay one more year. In addition, some of them are, are, are pledges that haven't been designated with, a, with a, a concrete troop commitment. There's an expectation, for example, that France or Germany will send in another 1,500 troops, but it's not firm yet. The problem we're going to face is that, uh, that beyond that, the number of troops by NATO uh, countries aside from the United States will decline significantly. The Dutch plan to pull out all their combat troops next year, and the Canadians um, who suffered horrendous casualties uh, last year, particularly in a few last week, plan to withdraw all their troops the following year, 2011. So it looks like at the same time the U.S. troops might be leaving, NATO troops will also be fading off. And this is where we run into the problem with the Afghan calendar. Uh, according to the Afghan government, it will take them about five years to build up enough troops and police to be able to take over the job from the NATO forces. They also need time to acquire additional revenue uh, because it, the cost of keeping those troops is, is much greater than the national budget. Uh, to keep 100,000 troops or beyond would be, was, is, is just, it's more than any than income than the government could spend on, uh, if it spent even its entire amount on the troops. So it looks like, well, next year, this, this year, we'll have a major surge of forces, and so this might be a decisive year, but if the tide fails to turn, and the U.S. troops start to leave in 2011, and the NATO troops start in 2011, there will be a problem if, if the Afghan troops, as expected, are not ready to fill that gap. So what we're going to hopefully see in the, in the upcoming uh, late January conference in London is a commitment by the NATO countries, including the United States, to provide additional funding and other support to the Afghanistan government beyond that 2010 deadline uh, for, for a decision at the end of this year. So something that can carry on to 2011, particularly 2012, 2013 and beyond. But we will talk about this later. Thank you.